All right, how about we get this rolling? Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. I'm Joe Vadillo from Property Women. Um, there, I'm hoping you can see on the screen the majority of the information. There might be a little picture of me and my lovely face, but you can actually minimize or actually remove me from the scene completely by pressing on the dashes. It depends on the settings that you've got on your computer, but you can actually move me away so you don't have to look at me. You can actually look at what we're here to talk about today, which is just one roof but two incomes. It's all about dual incomes, um, two incomes, dual keys, dual occupancies, duplex, uh, it's all the exciting stuff because it's about having two additional or two revenue streams coming in to your property and, and how important that is also to ongoing growth um, and in the ability for you to service loans and continue to build your portfolio as well. So let's launch, if I can, what's going on? There we go. I have to click on it, it looks like. Now, today joining me is my co-host, Siesta and Roxy. Um, usually I do a little bit of a show. Well, I will do a shout out about doing due diligence, but um, I need to let you know that these canines of mine, uh, I've got some chats coming in. Let me just double check. <laughs> Thank you. They are cute. They're naughty. I was thinking before, Siesta's half Irish wolfhound and quite big, and they're both rescues and they're both girls, and I've had them for less than a year. But if um, Siesta had a Tinder profile, she'd have to say she's got a fetish for TV remote controls and high heels. Um, she's cost us a lot of money in damage. And Roxy, the little one on the side, she's quite cheap and easy to feed, although she is the barker of the two of them. So they're in my vicinity. So the reason I'm telling you all about my girls is that I'm hoping they behave themselves. I've got a few bribery tactics to throw at them if they um, are noisy, but it's just me and the girls today. So I hope they behave. So here we are, you know the drill, always conduct your own due diligence, always do your own um, research and speak to licensed professionals. And what I mean by that is, of course, you know, lean on the support of buyers, agents or other businesses. I mean, even to a certain extent, your financial planner, but take your property advice and wisdom to on, on its, on its um, I guess, on its merits, but then do your own research as well. And make sure you're listening to the right people and you're getting advice from people who are licensed, who are professional, who are skilled in that particular area. Like you don't really want to be taking town planning advice necessarily from an accountant. Um, you don't really want to be taking design advice potentially from a solicitor. Obviously take everything on, on board as you go through, but you need to be sure that you're seeking the right wisdom from the right people and ultimately making the right buying decision that suits you and your phase of life as well. And more to this, make sure you take advice from people who are professional, well, not, not even that, just people who are successful. And I think it's really important to look to people as a bigger picture, you know, uh, uh, you know, ha if they haven't actually bought or they don't have a sizable property portfolio, are these really the people that you want to be talking to about that kind of information? Because people will share with you their insecurities and I guess sometimes their lack of true understanding of markets as well. So always, always do your due, due diligence. Okay, so today's strategy, I'm literally just going to be speaking about the strategy of two incomes through dual occupancies. Um, I'm not going to be talking about areas. I might touch on a few of them for you just so you've got an idea on how to or where to look if you want to go forth and do some homework yourselves. But um, today is really just about the strategy of having a dual income property in your portfolio as well. And a lot of people come to this as a fork in the road. They might already have an existing property. Perhaps the, um, you know, the, the goal is to have a diversified portfolio, which I'm a huge advocate for myself. And um, you're trying to make that next decision. And a lot of people will have a set and forget property and they might have one in strata and they might want have one where they're holding land for long-term plans to subdivide. And what a dual key property offers you is the potential to have a much stronger uh, income yield and help with the serviceability of the loan and other loans as well. It looks great in the bank size. It allows you to continue growing your portfolio. And um, it also means you can live now. You're not holding all your money up in, um, I guess, you know, loan, mortgage, stress or debt. And it's really important to make sure when you're building your portfolio that you don't sacrifice 
your life today for your life tomorrow. It's, it's about having that sort of a foot in both camps that you get to enjoy. You get to enjoy life along the way and that's all part of the journey, but it needs to be part of the planning as well. But of course, we're in it to make money. I really want to drum home that you look at your property portfolio as your business. It is a business. It is your side hustle. It is the additional income that you, um, you might have to, to, to a job for now or perhaps you're taking time out of full-time employment to raise a family. Perhaps you're still studying. Perhaps it's where you see yourself long-term um, as a subsidy to, and to a job that you've got. And some people who are having jobs that are really quite physical, like uh, especially people who are in the nursing or anything that on trades, at some point those jobs can be very, very taxing on a physical scale and, and people look to put property portfolio building as a, a, as a long-term, let's put our feet up and relax and enjoy life a little bit more as we do get older as well. Always in the business of making money. We're not for profit. We're not a not for profit. Um, make sure you buy a property for the right reasons. Don't buy it with emotion if you're an investor. It's really quite important to look at the numbers as well. So, oh, I've got a hand raise. Sorry if I can read that. I had a, a thing pop up. I don't know how that reads. Sorry, who did? I don't know who just put their hand up then, but you can ask me a question on chat if you like, and I'll try and help along the way. Um, and I'll answer any questions as well. So, whoops, I jump ahead of myself. So, here's a whole bunch of different strategies, and I personally have been involved with just about every single one, either as a buyer's agent or as an investor. Certainly, through my role at Property Women, I've been talking to a multitude of investors who have done um, some really crazy, fun, exciting, challenging things in their in their time. So I've had you know a bit of a an, an understanding across all of these. So dual keys as, and small scale developments is really what I'm going to be touching on as well today. And before we then embark on that, before you open the door of your next property as well, just remember the strategy has to suit you and your life stage and your level of comfort, if that is what, where you want to go. Just because it's popularised now doesn't mean it might be the right fit. So really learn, learn and understand yourself and your ultimate goals. So why dual occupancy? Um, dual occupancies are fantastic because they do put money in your pocket. And I'm going to show you some of the breakdowns and feasibilities of true case studies. Um, of clients of our sub uh, our other other business, which is Advocate Property Services, and I'll give you examples of the holding cost, um, outgoings, like a thorough end to end example, as well as images and show you what people have bought, um, what the floor plans look like, and some of the hurdles that people have had to overcome as well. And it's the numbers. It, the numbers for dual occupancy properties speak for themselves. They are really, really important, really vital. And, um, yeah, it, it does. It certainly helps people get to the next level. We've had a lot of clients come back and do these again and again, quite simply in shorter time frames because they're able to get the funding behind them as well. A dual occupancy looks like a large house. And I'll show you examples of that. And they often got two garages at the front. And you can tell often only because there's two letterboxes as well. And that's how you can identify what a dual, dual occupancy is. And there's a duplex floor plan. The, I will show you, I'll explain to you a bit more about the difference between a dual key and a duplex. Um, but ultimately it's a house and an, and an auxiliary unit. So you're under one roof, one side's a three bedroom, four bedroom, sometimes a two bedroom house. And on the other side could be a one or a two bedroom as well. In the case of a duplex, they're mirrored. I'll show you a floor plan so you don't get too confused. This is a really <laughs> information dense slide. I do apologize. Um, I'm going to be using the terminology dual key and duplex. And what they all come under is known as a dual dwelling. A dual key is also known as a dual dwelling but with an annexed unit. And what that means, it sits under one roof and it cannot be strata titled. Often one side is like, well, it is always one side larger than the other. And um, their cost point is a lot lower than duplexes or it is lower than a duplex. A duplex is a dual dwelling, but what it is is two sides mirror one another. Floor plan might be three bedrooms on one side. It's almost an identical flip on the other and there's another three bedrooms. The beauty of a duplex, whilst they cost a little, little more to get into the market because you need a uh, larger land holding and obviously it's a bigger build, um, it can be strata titled 
and it can be sold separately. So for a period of time, you might want to keep them both and reap the rewards of income. At some point, you might want to move into one side and continue the other side as a rental. Perhaps you want to free up some capital to do another investment and you can sell one side off and then retain one for yourself as well. And often, really highly, um, I mean, it's, it's almost guaranteed that you'll have equity by the time you finish building them because it's um, so cost efficient to actually put these together as well. Now, one thing I will say, and it depends on each different council, is if you strata title a duplex, you will, if you're going to keep it and rent it out, that's great. Don't strata title it until you want to sell it off because the council will hit you with two council rates. So that's something to be aware of. You might want to be trigger happy and, and strata title it straight away. But if you're going to hold it for 10 years, you might want to hold fire and just keep it chugging along to reduce your outgoings for council rates as well. Stamp duty savings is really important to understand. Now, the way Advocate Property Services works is we um, find or source the land, and you might already have land, and you're wondering whether this might be a good fit for yourself. Um, when you are buying a dual key property, and it's on two contracts, sometimes they are one contract, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. One contract is purely for the land only. So you're paying land cost and not the full cost of the actual build. So you're saving significant amount of money on stamp duty. And also they're brand new. So you get the benefits of the full depreciation of, of, of the property as well. You can buy them secondhand or existing as well. Um, but obviously the high rental yields are a winner. The depreciation is great if you're, you know, you've got that tax, beautiful tax deductions that you can, um, you know, benefit from if you're not working full-time still as well and our builders that we work with provide a full turnkey package so if you're going to go and source a builder just make sure you ask questions about the full turnkey package even if it's just a house and land package does it include blinds does it include flooring does it include grass sometimes it doesn't include a letterbox so it might look like a really fantastic deal but then when you sit down and work out the sums you could be looking at another fifteen to thirty thousand dollars in some instances. So just be cautious of when someone says a turnkey package that you do get a significant, you know, benefit from that as well. Because it all comes down to cash in your pocket. It comes down to making money, and it comes down to looking at your portfolio as you were a business. And it assists to build a property portfolio because you have got additional income and revenue coming into your household as well. And this is what is really important and really important at the moment, the way lending is, um, whilst it's getting a little easier to get funding, it has been very, very difficult pretty much since 2017 to really um, get your hands on as much money as you would have if you had have gone for a loan two years earlier. So don't underestimate the value of having, I mean, at, at this point in the marketplace, having a, a dual key property in your portfolio. Um, a lot of people talk to me about rental yield versus growth and that you've got to pick a path, you know, am I going to source a property with fantastic yield, but I'm sacrificing, therefore I'm sacri sacrificing growth. Um, it's a really important question and one that I would always say, why can't you have both? Why can't you have a foot in both camps? When you're building a dual key property, you can build these almost anywhere. Um, different councils have different rules. Um, some of them, you know, minimum uh, lot size is important. Some of them will cap how many can be done. Some of them will insist that the, um, the tenant on one side is known to the owner on the other or that the tenancies are known to one another. It varies from city, it varies from council. So there are certain councils that we work with that, that are uh, within close proximity to cities um, and they offer both. They offer growth, they offer um, all the good infrastructure that you're going to want as an investor but also get the rental yield as your day-to-day you know, -day benefit as well. You put your rental yield and the capital growth and a bit of a diversity to your portfolio and that's how you grow it. It really is a simple equation. It's just a matter of making it work and a matter of sitting down and planning it. And like a business plan, sit down and plan. You know, if I'm going to be looking at building my portfolio, this is my three-year plan, five, ten-year plan. Um, this is what I'm going to start with and this is, this is how I'm going to fit it around my life. Uh, if you're planning to have children or take time out to study, if you're nearing a retirement age, all of this needs to be taken into consideration whilst you build your portfolio as well. Of course, capital growth. 
Um, it, it will assist also with the deposit um, for your next property as well. Helps you build wealth, which is important, of course. Um, the rental yield will have an impact on your lifestyle. If you're holding a property that's only getting you 3.2% yield, that's going to have, I guess, a long-term effect on you if you're buffering that loan up. Even when it does offer growth, it is also important to remember day-to-day -day expenses as well and your serviceability when you go for another loan. And diversification, we're not um, preaching any particular location. I'm talking generically about um, this, this particular strategy on an Australia-wide basis. Um, but always look to minimise your risk in by diversifying, not putting all your eggs in one basket. Now, here's an example of what can be done when you do do a dual key property, is that because you are getting cash in your pocket each week, another opportunity presents itself that you can actually make extra weekly repayments. And if we were to look at this and break it down, here we've got a loan example of 4.4%. And I need to move my little bar so I can look at the numbers myself. 422,400 loan. If we were to put the extra $200 in a loan each week, to give you an example of the savings down here, and this is this is a, a bank's or a lender's um, a lender's calculator, the savings are over 153,000, and it also saves over the life of a loan, a 30-year loan, but it also saves you 12 years and nine months, which is quite significant. If that is one of your, I guess, approaches. To, to building your portfolio is paying down that loan and that's a, a perfect way or tool to do that as well. Now in 2017 in the federal budget they made some amendments to um, how we can depreciate property and those regulations mean that um, you know you can only fully depreciate all the plants and equipment on properties that are um, brand built brand new. So those deductions uh, fantastic when you do build a brand new property or you buy one that hasn't been occupied off the builder already. Here's some case studies for you. Okay, so we these are numbers and true true samples and case studies from clients of ours. Um, the assumptions here is that you've got a 20% deposit. We're looking at 7.7% property management on our numbers. Now that is a pretty standard Queensland fee. Generally, it's 5.5 in New South Wales, 6.6 .6 in Victoria, and 7.7 .7 in Queensland. I know regional areas can differ and go up a little bit as well. So we try to keep it so that it's a worst case scenario, perhaps for someone buying in Sydney, and it's pretty standard for a Queenslander. 4.4% interest only loan, and the person's income would be between eighty and one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. These are true examples. Now, Linnell and Amelia are not our clients. They're the street name. And he's two precise, they're the same floor plan, but when you build the dual keys and if you work with the builders that we have, you can actually make your own modifications and changes, which is awesome. Um, you pick your own colours, your own tiles. Um, you can pick and add additional, add additional funds to, um, I guess, improve the facade, if you like, if you want to have higher ceilings. Um, our recommendation, though, is that you don't overcapitalize. Just always keep that in mind when you are renovating or any, doing anything with property. Just keep in mind who your tenants are going to be and do they appreciate stone bench tops or chandeliers. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the floor plan for Linnell and Amelia. So here we have is we've got the bedrooms one, two and three on one side. And it's a shared wall between the two because this is a cliche dual key property. Now that wall is acoustically sound and it's a you know fire retardant wall and it and it's sound you know really soundproof. So you are sharing the same roof space. And on the other side, you've got one two bedrooms on there and an alfresco on the outside as well. In the backyard, your backyard is separated as well with a fence around it. So you've got a fully enclosed backyard. So if you have tenants with pets, dogs, young children. And it's, um, it's, it obviously is appealing to them. If people have got a budget that allows them to live in half a house versus a unit, it's always going to be a winner. Now, this floor plans can be amended. And this is what I love about the builders that we choose to work with. If you saw a floor plan, floor, floor plan you weren't particularly happy with or you felt like it was I don't know, too large here or too small there, they are quite malleable and we can move those floor plans around a little bit to also suit, suit a block. So if you already have a block of land and you're wanting to know if this will suit a block of land, we can actually engage the builder to come and have a look 
um, assess whether it's first of all feasible with the council and a town planner and they can tell you what you can and can't do with that particular block as well. So this is the, um, I guess, when our client first in, um, purchased this property, what their facade elevation of the property looked like. And one of those clients chose to render the house and this is what it looks like from the street. And as you can see, there's got the two letterboxes at the front, but it's very hard to decipher that there's actually two revenue streams going on in this house. There is a main front door and for the smaller side, they go around to the side of the house and there is a, a side access door there for them as well. And this is exactly the same um, property, but these particular clients chose to stick with the brick as well. And you can see these photos were taken just on completion because you can see the grass is all laid out there and ready to go. But it's taking, but it's not, not yet. Um, you can still see all the roll marks on there as well. And that's just another angle of that. And that's that outdoor area that I mentioned and the fence is all done and that's all included in the package as well. This is a standard bathroom. I just want to show you this bathroom. You can sort of see there's some scuff marks and some, there's a few dirty marks on this. But this is a raw photo taken before they'd done their final deep clean after the, all the trades were off site as well. So we go through a practical completion just to ensure that everything is right and ready to go. Um, you know, if there's any defects that need to be attended to. And then they do a thorough clean for handover to our clients or to tenants if that's the way it goes. You've got a pretty version of what those interiors look like as well. Clean bathroom, <laughs> standard bedroom, standard fittings. As I said, it's everything's included. So the blinds, the grass, you know, like there's no hidden, no hidden extras when you do sign one of these contracts. Now, here's the numbers, which I know you're all excited to look at because um, they're good and this is one of the reasons that you're here. The purchase price for this property was 477000 The rent they get is $680 per week. It's a really high yielding price point. Um, it's, that's, uh, it's getting harder to get that kind of yield, a 7.41% yield, mainly because the councils are making just a little, little bit of differences in that the minimum lot sizes are getting a bit bigger. So therefore, the cost to buy the land, is, and it, these areas are also growing, so the cost to buy the land isn't as easy as it was. Um, but the, still, the numbers, I've never seen them really dip below 6.2% at this point. We do a full analysis and look at your pre-tax cash flow estimates and it's $227 per week for this particular property and the depreciation over 10 years, um, $65,500. The stamp duty, remember I mentioned before that you buy the land first and then build the house on that land. So they made a saving of $10,674 on the stamp duty itself at purchase, which is you know really awesome, awesome numbers. Amelia, so that's the second one. Again, similar numbers, 7.45%. Um, yeah, very, very similar. So really good, strong numbers there. Um, we choose to use Washington Brown for all our depreciations. Their reports are thorough. They're very good. They've been in business for more than 40 years. They've got a calculator on their website that you can actually put details of your property in and then go through and actually have a look at what those diminishing values are. Um, yeah, so you have, as you can see here, the, the savings, what it would be over a 10-year period and how you choose to do that. And you buy, you purchase that report when the property's finished. And, um, yeah, you've got that for 10 years or as you hold that property and benefit from future ongoing tax benefits, which is awesome. Carnarvon, another example for you, another dual-key property, just showing you there that there's that wall that divides the two properties as well and how it looks on the outside. Now, this particular property is on an elevation. Now, there's a slight, um, I guess, uh, you can see the height difference there in, in one side to that block of land to the other. And that's how that finish looks. Um, again, the builder we used for this particular property, they, they, as I said, fixed price contract. And when they went to do work on this land, there was a couple of additional costs that they did incur as a result of the slope on this land but they kept true to their word and didn't charge the client any additional funds for this. This photo was taken right at completion because you can just see there's a few cables still outside of that garage there as well, but that's the finished product near to um, being, I guess, ready for tenancy, which is exciting. Making it work on the block. Um, if you've got a block of land, speak to a town planner, speak to the council, have a look at 
um, if there's any precedence of having dual keys as well. You need to have make sure there's an ease of access for cars. Uh, again, like councils like Logan City Council in Queensland, uh, making it so that there has to be enough off-street parking for, uh, for the cars, purely because, you know, you can't have everyone parking on the street just for ease of access for other vehicles and traffic and ambulances and everything as well. Um, and the fence line that divides the rear yard. So you want to make sure that both those units have got a good private rear and secured yard as well. So that's always a bonus and an absolute draw card to your tenants as well. Here's the numbers on Carnarvon. Purchase price, 531000 The rental yield or the rent per week is six ninety, and the yield 6.75%. Again, the cash flow pre and post tax per week is really strong. Depreciation just under 70000 over 10 years and a stamp duty saving of $13,863 because buy the land first and then bring the builder in. So perfect. That's on the two, that's a two contract um, property. You can do dual keys on a single contract and I'll explain a little bit how that affects you if you're a self-managed super fund buyer as well. Here's a duplex example for you. As I mentioned in the beginning um, of the webinar, duplexes are mirrors of one another. So there's exactly there's three bedrooms on one side, three bedrooms on the other. The floor plans are very, very similar and they sell really well and they can sell one side off and keep the other. So that means you're not losing the property. If you, for whatever reason you've got some sort of financial commitment, you need to free up one side only and keep the other side. Here's the example of the front elevation and the finished product. Again, this is a photo taken just as they're cleaning it up. So the trades are all off site now and they're just getting that ready. And it's a little bit prettier there, isn't it? Um, and then again, you can see the grass has, you know, just been laid in some pockets as well because they do the landscaping and they come and water it until it's all handed over as well. Here we've got the numbers on this one. So, so 606,300 was the actual purchase all in cost for, to do this particular duplex. Um, at the same time, duplexes as well is selling for 360000 Yeah, I mean, these are uh, existing ones, so they're not even brand new. The person coming along and buying one half for three sixty is isn't getting any depreciation benefits. It rents for $700 per week. Rental yield, 6%. Depreciation, there's more to depreciate. Just remembering that there's additional kitchens, additional bathrooms, um, and that's, that's the reason the depreciations are so strong. Excuse me. <coughs> Mm. Always got to drink water halfway through. And again, the stamp duty savings, which is awesome, is 12855 So I want to be really transparent about dual keys and duplexes when it comes to valuations. Um, as I said, there's, I'm going to cough again, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there, there is additional cost when you build them from, from the builder's perspective. They've got a, um, the extra wall in between with the materials that make it uh, fire safe and they make it acoustically clear, sound, sound um, nice and quiet for both sides. There's an additional fence in the backyard. Um, there's two kitchens. Sometimes there's three bathrooms. And then when the valuation comes in, uh, there's some lenders that will go, ah, like there's additional costs here. And they compare a three plus one dual key with a standard sale of a four bedroom house. And now, of course, they're not comparing apples with apples in this instance. Um, so what we've had to do in the past is get a couple of valuations done and the variation can be quite quite decent and then others will come in right on the nose. So that's the job of somebody who's supporting you in doing this build process. That's what they're to do and run around and look at. Slightly higher build costs, keep in mind, and that a lot of valuers will compare a three plus one with a standard four bedroom house and they're not comparable. How do you overcome that as an investor? If the valuations fall short, then you'll need to have additional cash buffer up to buffer up that, that um, shortfall. It could be $10,000. Other times you, during the settlement period, you can seek out an additional lender who will come in on the nose with their valuation. So generally it's, a, it's, it's fine as long as you understand how valuations work and how the banks work with that as well. Catalyst Street. Another dual key for you to have a look at. I'll just get through these. But this is what I like about this one is you've got the images here. Um, you get a sense of what day-to-day -day, day -day life would look like when it's all furnished. 
oh, excuse me. Um, and a street elevation, and there it is all pretty, ready to rock and roll for a tenant. Two letterboxes. That's, that's how you tell. Otherwise, it does look like a standard house. Really neat, really nice, small, um, you know, like just neat little home that goes and it rents so well and so strong. And it's quite astounding how the second side or the smaller side tends to move really fast because we're in a society now where, you know, um, people uh, are living longer, living healthier lives. They may be downsizing. They've got adult children. They no longer need a big family home. They don't want to go into any sort of assisted living or units. They want a small house. They want a, a small yard and a dog or a cat or some sort of space that's their own. So those small sides move really well. A lot of people living alone um, that, you know, really want to enjoy that ability to have half a house versus living, into, living in a unit. And the other beauty about dual keys in properties where there's not much in the way of unit offerings is those smaller sides will rent really fast. It's quite astounding. Numbers on this one, 6.7% rental yield. Just have a look at that. Holding cost was $7,000 by that whilst they built that and they saved 10,543 on stamp duty as well. And the duplex. Here's the duplex where they've had to flip it and it's not quite mirror, mirror, but it's same, same. Show you what that looks like on the street view and that's the finish. Remembering here that you pick your own colours when you do a build. You can choose, you can do the render, you can keep it like a brick facade. Um, you, could, you might want to do that colour white but then change the doors of the garage. So it's really, it's, it's a little bit of fun but always remember to um, try and keep a, a very, I guess, um, easy mutual palette when you're doing any renovations. If you're, I know, you know yourself, if you're a little bit crazy on colour or perhaps, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, maybe you just need to be mindful that you want this to be something that a tenant of, you know, multiple different demographics would want to move into as well. So just think about that when you do um, choose your paint, choose your tiles and everything as well. Um, okay. Numbers on this one. Comparables are selling for $329 plus each. So you can see there's already equity in this as it's finished. The rental yield, 5.2%. Um, so that's, you know, because it is a duplex, it's a bit more expensive, but the stamp duty savings, $15,000, depreciation, 75500 over 10 years. So that's a good number. And these are just some of the resales. And what surprises us is that we can build these brand new for less than what these secondhand or existing ones are actually selling for in some of these areas as well. So this one here is $558,000. Um, $545,000. So the numbers when we do ever look at building something like this, and I'm quite happy to share this feasibility um, Excel document if somebody wanted to have a little play around with the numbers on their own for themselves. Um, as you can see here, we've got the yellow fields, which allows you to, um, you know, how much you, you can actually change these. And it, you can put in, you know, I'm borrowing 90%, I'm borrowing 70%. Property management rate, uh, for this purpose, we've done 7.7. .7. In loan interest, we've done 4.4. .4. But obviously, that's going to differ from each person. Um, now, you put your, your estimated purchase price. These are the funds that you're going to require. That looks at your deposit, your estimated stamp duties, your legals, any pest and building reports that you need to do as well. Coming over here, we look at all the expenses that you're going to incur, council rates, there's no strata fees on this because we haven't actually started, started anything. Your water rates, build insurance, landlord insurance, you know, all your outgoings. You've got to be really realistic about your outgoings when you're doing your numbers on property and what those costs um, will come down to. This is your weekly, monthly, annual. You know, every day, every now and then you might incur something that's a little bit higher as a result. Um, got a question popped up. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, no problem, Wayne. I'll get that Excel spreadsheet sorted. If um, Juno, maybe you can touch contact Wayne and just ask for his email address so that, um, yeah, we can send you a copy of that Excel doc as well. Um, the cash flow before tax, $109 cash flow. This is based on the rent. So this is the lower end of the rent scale. You'll get $109. And the higher end of the rent, rent, rent scale, you get $590. So there's the difference there in terms of what your cash flow will look like on a weekly basis, monthly and annually as well. And these are the yields on this particular property. 
I hope that makes sense because I'm ripping through an Excel document with a lot of stuff to look at. But this particular one, we're looking at, you know, four bedrooms, a lock-up garage, it's dual key, the size of the property, it's made from brick and tile. So that's what we're looking at here. Now, I think a lot of you might be going, well, what about holding costs when you're building, which is obviously a really valid point. And what does it look like when you need to get two different loans? You need a two contract, you buy with the land with one, hence you save a lot of money on stamp duty. The second one is a construction loan and what happens with those is there's five six <laughs> I it was five, six um uh de well, the deposit holds the you know gets the builder going so then you've got when it's a base stage there's an additional fee that, that you know they charge you 15 percent frame it gets enclosed um, all the fixings and the practical completion so you're paying that loan down over a period of generally like four months, six months if the weather's been quite unpleasant. But you pay that down so you're not paying your interest on the entirety of that loan as it goes through. And your lender will probably send someone out to double check on it, make sure that it is as the builder has reported as well. And and um, and now, so just having a look at what the whole cost would look like. Again, this is an interactive Excel document that we do for each client. The estimated stamp duty for this particular property for the land only was only just over $7,000. If they had have bought the same property completed at the full price of what the client did pay in the end, they would have paid 18, almost $18,500. So their saving on stamp duty was 11212 which is quite a decent chunk of savings, especially when you get into the property market. Everything does, everything matters. Okay, so whilst it's not earning any income, it's just land and we're building on that, they receive, they've received these additional costs because of the build. So those costs accrued was $8,043. If you take the cost of the saving from your stamp duty to the cost of holding the land, um, our client still experiences a saving of $3,168 um, and they've got that property brand new. So it really is just a tick, tick, tick kind of scenario for the winning and cash flow is king. So it really is good. You just need to plan for that period of time whilst it's being built as well. So we've got, you know, a replace your income goal. I think it's really important to have a look at how um, your property portfolio will actually help aid um, your day-to-day -day life and ultimately get yourself out of the workforce. And the reason we love the dual keys if you look at the gross rental yields on Australia, Australia wide, and this is RP data's data, as you can see, it's all you know Darwin six percent, but a lot of them are regional areas. You do get higher rental yields, of, often offset by you know a slower um, uptake of um, growth, capital growth. Um, where's Brisbane here? Four point five percent. Sydney. 3.5%, Melbourne 3.6%, Adelaide 44 You know, this is the standard average rental yield that you expect from a property. Um, I'm going to have to rip through this because I'm running out of time and I want to make sure there's some time for Q&A at the end. If you've got a 3.2% rental yield and you own that property outright and you're getting $370 per week, your yearly income will be $16,000 based on a property of 500 grand. At 3.2%, by the time you've owned several of these, one, two, three, four, five, six properties, um, you're getting $256,000 yearly rent if you own those properties outright. So that's awesome, right? Let's have a look if you've got a property that's 4.4% rental yield and you own that property outright. Again, own it outright, here's your weekly rent, here's your yearly rent, that's the property's value. By the time you've got six of those performing for you on a weekly basis, you're earning 6,700 plus. Yearly, that's a decent amount of money, $352,000. Let's have a look at what it might mean for you if you own a dual key property outright at 6.4% 6 6 rental yield. Um, we've got the weekly is great, 615, who doesn't want that in their pocket every week? Yearly, 32,000. Add six of these to your portfolio, and you're making over half a million dollars every year. That's with six rental, six um, dual key properties as well. So the returns are really strong and speak for themselves. And what astounds me, it really does surprise me, is how few people actually of the Australian population own more than one property. It's, um, you know, once you get to someone who owns more than two rental properties, uh, investment properties, you're only talking about 1.42% of the entire population. Um, and by the time you get to six plus, it's 0.068%. It's not significant at all. And it actually surprises me because it's not 
it, I, look, it's just not impossible. And people do fear, how the hell am I going to get on the get on, get on the ladder for buying property? But you can do it. And it's just a matter of chipping away. And I've seen people who haven't been able to speak English and had to learn how to speak English and navigate the country's laws who have been able to build portfolios within a handful of years as well. So we don't really have much in the way of excuses. Um, and the fact that you're here and joining me now, obviously you're not one of those people. So I'm preaching to the converted. Let's just look overall with your property portfolio with the red lines here representing your debt level and then the bluey purple value of the property over a 30 year period or 30 to five, 30 to 40 year property, the, the rise and rise and rise of the value of your property. And this is based on statistical data. Your debt diminishes, diminishes, and there you go. You actually have a nice little nest egg at the end. If you haven't you know, you've only got, say, 20 years left in the workforce or whatever it is your plan, you need to take into consideration how you're going to consolidate debt and, and eat into it and erode it so that by the time you do retire, you have got a really good nest egg and a really good foundation for yourselves as well. When you're looking at a builder, it depends where your property is. If you've got land or you're looking to use a builder for um, the purposes of a dual key property, always make sure um, that you, let ch you check that local state's, what the builder's license looks like, have a look at samples of what they got, ask some questions like, do they do a full turnkey um, build? Um, you know, is it fixed price? You don't want any nasty surprises. Are they flexible on floor plans? Because sometimes if they're project builders, you'll find that this is what you get. I don't care if your land's 600 square metres or 400, that that's what we do. You want to make sure they're flexible and they can work around the merits of your land. Maybe you've got really beautiful outlook and you want to make sure windows look over that particular outlook. Um, you want to make sure they've got lots of, lots of builds, lots of experience and they're adequately insured as well. So always take that into consideration. Um, whilst we don't have a crystal ball when it comes to investing in property, there are the similar, sorry, the same merits apply, whether your property is in Perth or whether it's in Darwin, whether it's in Sydney. Look at the supply and demand indicators of your of the where the location of the property is. Um, what is the auction clearance rate? Do people even want to rent there? What's renting well? Um, how much competition is in the marketplace? You know, you might find it's an, an opportunity there with the, um, you know, it, that there's just inadequate amount of rentals so that people, will, you'll find that you're going to be able to push up your rental yields as well if you're building additional homes for people. Um, are there parks? Are there amenities? How affordable is it? And employment. Make sure you always look at the, the growth um, statistics of an area, not just on the infrastructure spend, but making sure that babies are being born. You don't want to be in an area so much that um, you find it's an older generation, older population, and people are, tend to you know, move out of that area for employment. And then, yeah, it's a bit more of a, a tourist destination or a bit of a quiet location. Um, Cafes and restaurants, always do the coffee challenge when you go to an area. If it's got Bunnings, all the better. You know that these Woolworths, big companies spend tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of researching. They've already done the research. So follow where Costco goes. Look at where Ikea is. These are the areas that are going to be expecting substantial growth. So jump on board, you know, um, always important to do. And then a plethora of informational software that you can tap into. Some of it's paid, some of it's not. You can use services like our own buyer's agency where it's a complimentary service to help you buy a dual key property. Um, and, you know, jump on realestate.com.au. They've got some really good tools on there. Um, RP data, whilst there's a cost for that, but there's all these opportunities that you can, as an investor, find a fantastic opportunity to buy in a certain location as well. So I do put my money where my mouth is and I'm drinking water again, excuse me. What you're looking at here is my block I've got, um, number 19, I've, I've put a red line around that. Um, I have got a DA approval now to do three of these myself uh, on this block. So there's number one, which is street facing, number two and number three. The street at the back can't be, um, um, it has to remain grassed, unfortunately, for stormwater reasons. But I am in the process now of getting, I've got an in-ground pool I need to fill in as well. But I've got a dual key here coming in, a dual key there, and dual, possibly a duplex at the back. So I'm converting one rental into six. I'm going to do it as a phase A, B and C just for, obviously, just for um, cash flow purposes myself and lenders, you know, they need, they've got their requirements and there's just some of the examples of the houses that we've got plans for on that block. 
um, and this is another block that we own and this one's got an existing house on the front and we're going to do a battle axe at the back and then put a dual key at the back here and I think we might eventually do a dual key here but this is where you need to be cautious if you've got a long-term held property just make sure that the council rules haven't changed over time as well the um it's 400 when, when we do this um, subdivision and it's all approved and ready to go it's i'm going to have 442 square meters here um, but logan city council is making 450 square meters the minimum size and i think i've got about 12 months to sort of argue my point as to why i should be allowed to have a dual key at the front as well so if you remember the last property I'm going to have one, two, three on that. And if I can get two on this, six, what's that, three, four, five, that's 10 rental incomes um, off the two. At the moment, they're just two relatively average homes. <laughs> so 10 rental incomes, that's going to be a good, happy day. It's just a bit of a process and you just got to chip away at it. Um, we all have to do it. Yeah, that's what that um, one's going to look like at the rear. Some examples of properties that are available now. This one suits an SMSF. I mentioned before, the two contracts, um, you can do dual keys on a single contract sometimes. Um, it, depends on, it depends on the builder or the developer if they do that. This particular one was actually finished April 26th and now it's already been rented out on one side. 6.2% yield and you get the full depreciation benefits because um, the property is new um, and then it hasn't been tenanted for too long. And that's available now for 498000 and it would suit an SMSF buyer. Here's another one I think is quite, I think it's quite handsome. Um, it's completed, it'll be, it will be completed in six weeks, another single contract. Um, it's 481000 It's a two plus one. Actually, so was the last one. I didn't just define that. The last one was a two plus one as well. See, these smaller properties, it looks like a house. Like it looks like a very, it looks like a standard house. Um, you know, see this one here, it's in Birkengarry, 2.2 2 plus 1. Um, it's really, that's <laughs> my dog yawning. Um, it's, I think it's actually a really nice looking opportunity there for someone who wants to be buying a, a self-managed super fund. Um, here's another example of a dual key. This is a 3 plus 2 and it's located in Bethania. Uh, again, 6.6% rental yield and gives you an idea. It's like a, to suit the block, you've got the double garage, as you can see here in the floor plan as well. Did, how do I go with my timing? Pretty good, I must say, must say so myself. Um, if you've got any questions for me, feel free to hit me up now. Um, if you would like to hear more about dual key properties, um, if, if, if it's us looking at the land that you might already have, if you'd like some advice around that, or even if I can refer you on to a town planner, um, depending on where it is and how well I know that location, I'm more than happy to assist. Um, my dog yawns a lot. Um, yeah, the Advocate Property Services assist people buying uh, new and existing houses. When we buy the new property, our cost for service is actually taken by the builder as a marketing uh, fee to us. So that's the reason why we do all of this for you, all of the homework. We even find the land for you, match it up. Um, then we help you assist with the uh, process of getting your contracts reviewed and you've got you either work with a solicitor or a broker that you're already working with, or we can assist you with referring you to one and getting that deal through as well. So it's really important. Um, yeah, June has just popped up our website if you'd like to come and visit us and ask for more um, details or more questions. If you've got a brief in mind, perhaps you've got a budget and not quite sure where or how it could be applicable, we do a lot of this in um, Newcastle, Upper Hunter region in New South Wales. Um, I've got someone asking me for a PowerPoint copy of our PowerPoint slide. Absolutely, we can send that to you as well. Juna, if you can take a note of that for me. Just another question. No, it's just... So if that's all good, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you join me for today. That's me, Joe Vidillo, um, featured in that Property Millionaires Exposed book. And that book actually came out originally about 12 to 15 years ago. And um, it was one of the first books, first education Bible, I guess you could say, in property that I actually absorbed. So it was a huge um, bonus to me to actually have Dale Beaumont ask me to be featured in the one that came out in February of this year. So it was super, super complimentary to be asked to be in that. 
And if that's everything and I've got no further questions. Oh, hang on, another chat. Let me just have a look. Oh, thanks, Juna. Yeah, she just said info at advocateservices.com.au if you'd like to hear more. Um, thank you, everyone, for being, um, being with us today. Don't forget also to jump onto facebook.com forward slash property women. Stay in the conversation. Stay around like-minded thinkers. Stay inspired. This is just one strategy of so many that we discuss. And um, I think it's important to always make sure that the strategy is suitable to you and what you need out of life really and your life stage so you know by all means keep that in mind when you're also doing your research as well um if that's it i will say sayonara and um have a fantastic rest of the day cheers